What's going on, everybody? This is YouTube. You're back to a brand new video. A brand new video, as I normally say. We are here. March Madness, round one, day two. The final day of round one was completed today. It's actually 2 30 in the morning right now. We just about to get the laptop, and I just realized that I had not recorded my recap for the games because I did a video last night and then had it set to upload this morning at 11 a.m. So I want to do the same thing tonight after the games, which I think ended at around midnight, maybe 12.30 is when the last game ended. And now it's 2.30, so it's two hours later, and I totally forgot I'm about to go to sleep, so very tired. But we're going to push through anyways, guys, because this is the best time of the year, and we got to show out. So first off, after the first round, there are now no more brackets. It actually took a bit longer than last year, I would say. Like last year, it was there were no more brackets like on the very first day, I think, almost. I don't really remember. But definitely out of the first round. But what a day we had. Let's just say that. Let's go ahead and get started off here. Uh, uh, oh, another topic. But John Robinson. Well, actually, we'll get that in later. Uh, first game. FAU versus Northwestern. You can see before you, FAU lost. This is honestly a big upset for Northwestern because FAU was a huge favorite in this game. Obviously, FAU was a similar to last year. They were the nine seed. I believe they beat Memphis and they beat the one seed. I forget what one seed they beat, but they beat a one seed. And they went to the Final Four. Uh, they were in the top ten in the beginning of this year, obviously, because they performed so well in March Madness. People thought they were going to be dominant in their conference and perhaps get a top six seed in the conference, but they had a down year this year, I suppose. Uh, the pressure got to them. They played a much tougher schedule and therefore lost more games. Playing with the Western, they had like, how many turnovers did they have? I think 17 turnovers. Oh, wow. They had 21 turnovers. Their player, they did not play too well. Johnny Day was only one of six. Only had 18 points. So yeah, they had a lot of turnovers, guys. A lot of turnovers. And uh, they had a chance at the end. Uh, instead of driving, it was, it was a tie ball game. But instead of driving, uh, Johnny Davis decides to put up a horrible three-point shot. Contested, out of balance, has to heave it up. It doesn't go in, obviously. I think it was an air ball, actually. And then they get smacked in the overtime. They did not deserve to win that game, to be frank. After that last play, they really should have driven in the ball, drawn a foul, or tried to get a closer shot. It, it, very out of character for FAU and they are out early. But uh yeah, whatever. Then we got Baylor versus number fourteen Colgate. This was, I suppose, one of the more popular upsets in terms of a three versus a fourteen, because Baylor notoriously does not perform well in March Mass, despite except for that one year when they won the championship. But they silenced the doubters. People thought they were a very weak three seed and weren't gonna do much, regardless if they won this game or not. They had a great game, 9-2 to 6-7. Really wasn't really... Actually, it was close for a bit, and then Baylor pulled away and then just steamrolled them from there. So a great win for Baylor. Great confidence booster going into the next round. San Diego State versus UAB. This was a very close game, as you can see here, four points. San Diego State pulled it out late. Tough win. This was a popular upset pick, but uh, San Diego State pulls it out. Marquette versus Western Kentucky. This is a game. So Marquette wins by nearly 20 points. Uh, but John Robinson, if you don't know who he is, he was the Texas running back. One of the best running backs in the nation during his time in Texas. And one of the best young running backs to play for the Falcons, I believe. And he had the perfect bracket until this game. For some reason, he picked Western Kentucky to beat Marquette. I'm not too sure why he did that, but he did. And this is when he finally got his bracket Wrong. I think he was like 17 out of 17 at that point. And then we have a very unfortunate game right here. We got New Mexico State number 11 versus number 6. New Mexico, New Mexico State was the prime time 11 seed. And people were thinking they could make a deep march. They could make a deep run. Maybe it'd be a Final Four team. But they got smacked by Clemson. They just had a horrible game. Just did not perform well. Clemson was 9-0 in the beginning of the season, and then they had a very long dry spout. But this game was a great statement game that, hey, we're playing our best basketball right now when it counts, and don't underrate us. Wow, 3 of 23 from 3-point. That is really, really bad. Very, very low. 
15 of 23 from free throw. That's also very, very bad. 65%. 13 turnovers is not too bad. Let's go look at uh, players. This guy, House, did not have the best game. People thought that he might be a breakout player. He only had 12 points. was 4 over 14 from the field. Then we got a guy, 1 of 7, 0 of 6. Yikes. Uh, Mashula actually went to my school. He did not play at all. Maybe he was hurt. I'm not too sure. But unfortunate loss, especially for my bracket. My bracket is screwed now. Mexico is out because I was having them for a deep run. But it is what it is. Then we got number one UConn versus number Stets. And this game was not anywhere close the whole time. It was 91 to 52. Very embarrassing. But it's what you expect normally from a 16 seed. We've seen some 16 seeds win in the past. But this was not even close. Uh, UConn's not being touched for a while. And this was the big bracket buster, I suppose. Yale, number 13, being number four, Auburn. Actually, my mother actually picked Yale, and I was like, what are you doing? You're dumb. Auburn's probably going to play UConn and probably take them to the wire. But no, they lose to Yale. I don't know what happened to Auburn. They had a chance. If, you, if you've seen the highlight, it was unbelievable. They were 7-20 from the three-point range. Not the best. 68% for free throw. Got to bump that up. Which number is not too bad. But at the end of the game, they had multiple, multiple chances, and they just choked. They actually, they were up for by a decent amount, and then Yale came, came storming back, and then they just mistake after mistake, and then so many wide-open layups they just miss at the end, just unbelievable. I think they had like six chances and maybe three different possessions at the very end of the game, just unbelievable. Uh, did not deserve the win, to be frank, so kudos to Yale. Uh, they have one dude. Let me let me go back to the stats real quick. Look at yeah, we've got uh this guy right here. How do you say his name? Absolute beast. Twenty eight point six and nine. Was cooking them all game. Was doing off the dribble, quick dribble move in a guy's face, off balance, banking it in. Great, great player. Colorado knocks off Florida, one hundred and two to one hundred. Quite the high scoring game here. Both were shooting well, 6 of 10 and 11 of 25. Both shot great for free throw. Both were shooting great from the field goal range. Both had pretty low turnovers. Very, very impressive. This guy from Florida had 33 points. Very impressive. And then look at the spread here for Colorado. 17, 16, 21, 12, 23. How do you guard that? You really don't. Colorado is playing their best ball. They got a big dude. He was uh, dominating Florida down low in the paint. Colorado had a beautiful shot. It's actually almost shot for shot, the exact shot that Kawhi Leonard hit when he was playing for the Raptors, and it bounced up, bounced up, and then in to beat the 76ers in the playoffs. Almost the exact same shot, exact same spot. Unbelievably how uncanny it was that they won that game. And then we've got a and in Nebraska. a and pretty much from beginning to end, dominated this game. And they were they were red hot. Nebraska had no chance. Uh, 56% from three. Meanwhile, Nebraska was only 31%. Uh, Nebraska only missed two free throws. That's very impressive. Got out and bounded by a crazy margin. 40-28 is really, really bad. They had 14 offensive rebounds. Only had eight turnovers. Very, very impressive. Uh, Kaminga, Tominga has last game as Nebraska. He People thought that he could be a breakout star. Uh... 21 points, not too bad. 5'11", 3-point range. Very, very good. Come down here to the guard play. Taylor had 25 points. 7 of 10. Went off. Absolutely went off. Takes a and is a scary, scary, scary team. And uh, Houston better watch out next round. That's all I got to say, folks. They better watch out. Vermont and Duke. Vermont actually had this game close towards about the halfway point in the second half. And then Duke pulled away late. Duke did not have their best game. Actually, if we go to the stats here and we look at Mr. Uh, Lepowski, only had three points. Only shot the ball once because he was double teamed. Instantly got the ball, he was double teamed. And so they did not let him do anything offensively. And it worked for a bit. But as you can see here, 15, 15, 13, 14, hard to guard that. But Duke played. Duke did not play very well. They need to play a lot better if they're going to beat the next team they're going to play, which is down here. And we'll talk about that in a bit. Grand Lake State versus Purdue wasn't really close. If we go here, Zach Eady, again, what, 30 points? 30, 30 points and 21 rebounds. Obviously, dominant performance there. No surprise they beat Grand Lake State. Charleston versus Alabama, 109-96. to 96. Another very high-scoring game. 
let's see, 30% from three-point range. Wow, 64% from free throws, 24-37. That is horrific. Absolutely horrific. Yikes. Got Alba rebounded, too. 30 points for Mark Sears. Great game for him, obviously. But uh, I personally don't think Alabama has any chance the next round. Houston versus Longwood. This, again, was a close 40-point game. I think they were, like, up 14 to nothing in the very beginning. Unfortunately, let's look and see how much uh, their star player had. Starters. Why is it? Why does it have multiple? Look, it does. It does every player twice. That's weird. Cryer had seventeen. Shed had only eleven. Whatever. And then the big upset. Honestly, there wasn't really a big upset. Wisconsin versus James Math. This was a very popular, in my opinion, the most popular twelve seed upset. And honestly, it was not close. James Madison, it's only an 11-point game, but James Madison had this game wire to wire. Wisconsin had no chance. They were getting just absolutely outplayed. James Madison started them on defense all night long. Only shot 37%, 37% and 30% from three. 65% from beat the range. Not very good. Had 19 turnovers. Just JMU came in and were playing Physical, very physical, very quick, and the Badgers were like, what the hell is happening? And they did not answer, ever. Kudos to the Dukes. They are a very, very scary team, folks. Very scary. Duke is going to have a handful. Duke's going to play them. And James Van is going to definitely beat Duke. Definitely beat Duke. Because Duke is one of those teams, much like Wisconsin, where when you get if you give them contact and you play rough and you play hard, Duke, at least this year, is not a very tough team. They shy away from physicality. They, I don't know. This is, it's a weird Duke team because Duke team has always been a physical team, but this year they have not been physical at all. And uh, maybe it's because one of their players paints their nails, but whatever. TCU versus Utah State, 68-72. I personally picked Utah. I personally picked TCU to win this game. I was surprised that Utah State pulled away late. TCU just could not cut into that lead. They could not get within the points. They would get close and then just they could not do it. And then another big upset, honestly, another popular 12 seed upset. Grand Canyon beat St. Mary's. It uh, pulled away late here. Only 7 of 25 from 3. St. Mary's was down pretty much the entire game. And Grand Canyon played absolute great game. Absolutely a great game. This guy was 3 of 13 from 3 point range. Yikes. Get a hint, bud. St. Mary's always flops the tournament, though. That, that is a fact. St. Mary's is always overrated because they don't play anybody except for Gonzaga, and they actually beat Gonzaga twice this year, but Gonzaga is a much better team than St. Mary's, to be frank. I feel like if they would have met again in a tournament, because Gonzaga is playing great, they probably would have smacked St. Mary's, but St. Mary's is a doo -doo -doo dookie water team in the tournament. But that's the end of the first round, so let's go ahead and go to the official bracket and see what we've got cooking for the next round. In the second round, we've got Newcon with Western. We've got UConn should smack this team. I'm not going to lie. San Diego State and Yale. This is going to be a good game, folks. Can Yale continue their Cinderella run? I think they can. The Dukes. The 11 seed versus Illinois. Can they continue their run? I think they can. But Illinois is a great team. They have very good offensive and defense efficiency, which is what you look for in the, in the tournament. Then we've got 17 Washington, who technically pulled off upset because Drake was predicted to win, to be frank with you guys. Versus number two, Iowa. Iowa State should smack them. Keyword should. Let's go back up now to the South region. We just got finished with the East. We're going Houston versus a &M. This is a scary, scary game for Houston. If a &M can shoot well and their guards start pouring it in, Houston better watch out, folks. This could be a big bracket buster right here, and I hope it happens. James Madison versus Duke. Another big upset potential right here. James Madison, again, plays very, very physical, and Duke does not like that this year. This is a weird, weird Duke team. Watch out, Duke. You guys you guys better pick it up and play tough, or you guys are going to get your ass beat. Look at this right here, folks. 11 seed versus 14 seed. This is what we love to see. This is what March is all about. 11 seed versus a 14 seed. NC State should not be in the tournament, but they went on a tear, won the ACC. Now they're here. Oakland beat Kentucky, guys. Beat Kentucky. And, uh, hey, Oakland players are very adamant. The coach... And the player is very adamant that they are not another team, that they mean business. They're here to stay. Who knows what's going to happen in that game? Personally, I think NC State will probably win that game. 
Colorado and Marquette. Now, Colorado is playing great. Marquette has been beat by lesser teams, so watch out for Brockett Bester right here as well. North Carolina, Michigan State. Michigan State, smother Mississippi State. If they play like that, they can beat North Carolina because, again, North Carolina is a very up-and-down team. So watch out for a good Brockett Bester right here, folks. Brockett Bester, I'm telling you. Grand Canyon, Alabama. I personally have actually picked Grand Canyon to beat Alabama in my bracket. I've got them... I mean, I got them beating this team, to be frank. Actually, yeah, I got them beating this this team right here. So, see what happens. And Clemson busts my bracket. I got I had New Mexico in the Final Four actually winning this side of the bracket. They'll be playing number three Baylor. This is this is going to be a close game. This should be a really great game right here, and I hope it will. Dayton versus Arizona. This should not be a this should not be a contest. Arizona should smack them, but as we've seen in the past, Arizona tends to lose early. But we'll see if they can right the ship this year in the West region. Going on to the final, the Midwest region, we've got Purdue and Utah State. Should be no contest for Purdue. Should be a wallop. But again, Purdue has been a one seed and has lost before, so you never know. Gonzaga and Kansas. As we know, Kansas cheated in the last round. There was a call that was not reviewed for some reason. That was all a ball that changed outcome of the game. Kansas does not deserve to be in the second round. I hope Gonzaga smacks them, to be frank. In fact, I've got Gonzaga beating Purdue in the next round, actually, in my brackets. Coming over here, we got 11 Oregon and Creighton. This is a trap game for Creighton. You better watch out. Oregon is red hot, and they mean business. Not afraid of anybody. Potential bracket buster. Actually, really wouldn't be a bracket buster because Oregon is a very, very popular pick to upset this region and go to the Final Four. They're very popular. They're probably one of the most popular 11 seeds to win, probably ever. They are picked very, very highly in a lot of brackets. Texas versus Tennessee. Let's see who's the true UT. So this should be really great. This should be a good game. If Texas plays with potential, it's going to be a great game. If Texas plays like they have played in the past because their coach sucks, doesn't know what he's doing, Tennessee could wipe the floor with them. So crazy, crazy stuff going on. All the two seeds are still remaining. We have lost some three seeds. We've lost a lot of five seeds. We've lost... Half of the five seeds. We've lost one, two, no, one of the two seed, one of the three seeds. We've lost a lot of six seeds. We lost one, two, three, six seeds. Impressive. The nine seeds are doing a bit better. Actually, it's tied. Seven seeds, surprisingly, doing well here. Except for one, three and one. Very impressive. Very, very impressive. So can't wait for round two. If I had to do predictions, I've got UConn. I've got, I'm not going to do that. But we'll see what happens And as we continue. Again, leave a like if you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe to get more recaps. Don't forget to also comment down below how your bracket is doing. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Stay frosty. Enjoy those games, all right?